This too is Puerto Rico. In this plant, we manufacture the most prescribed mechanical heart valve in the world. We are the world number one producer of antiarthritic medicine. Our scientists and engineers have developed robots to do microbiological and chemical testing. This is our surface mount technology manufacturing facility. This technology represents the first breakthrough in electronic manufacturing for the last 10 years. Our operation here is pure state of the art. We are using the latest computer technology, the most advanced artificial intelligence and robotics. Puerto Rico has become the pharmaceutical manufacturing capital of the world. Over 80 plants manufacture close to $8 billion in products. And the industry continues to grow and expand at a rate of 17% annually. Within this manufacturing facility, you will see the most advanced technology in the manufacturing of PC boards and computers. We use the latest technology of intercorporation microprocessors. The industrial development of Puerto Rico is a remarkable story. But to really appreciate the island's incredible progress, Puerto Rico's story must be told to illustrate the tremendous change the island and its people have gone through over the past few decades. The sad reality in Puerto Rico in the 1930s was misery, abuse, and injustice. Puerto Rico's economy was dependent on sugarcane. The sugarcane fields belonged to powerful entities whose owners did not live in Puerto Rico. The salary of a cane field worker was 50 cents a day. Politics was in the hands of the powerful owners of the great sugar mills, beneficiaries of misery who bought the conscience of political chieftains and who also bought the people's vote. What could be done to change this terrible situation? How long would a noble people stand for this slavery? To put an end to these evils and the corrupt practice of buying votes, one extraordinary man created what was needed, a completely different political party. His battle cry, dignity versus money. Vergüenza contra dinero. Y así pues nos enseñó a nosotros a ser de hombres más dignos y no venderle el voto porque yo una vez cogí medio peso también en el 36. In 1938, under the inspirational direction of Luis Muñoz Marín, a group of patriots who were about to make history founded the Popular Democratic Party. The profile of a peasant wearing his straw hat is the party symbol. Its motto, Bread, Land and Liberty, is a whole new revolutionary program. The debate over status dominated the country. Muñoz coined his famous phrase, status is not the issue. In cuanto se declaró que el estatus político no estaba, como decíamos entonces, no estaba en issue, usando una palabra eh, inglesa. O sea, no estaba sujeto a decisión en las elecciones. En cuanto se declaró eso, empezó una era de progreso muy rápido en Puerto Rico. Antes había habido un estancamiento tremendo. Mucho debate de independencia y estabilidad, pero un estancamiento tremendo en los problemas vitales de nuestro pueblo. In response to corrupt politicians and all their money, working men and women who wish to demonstrate the value of their dignity turned out by the thousands from the island's mountains and valleys. The date was November 6, 1940, the day of the Great Dawn. The victory of the new popular Democratic Party was astounding, surprising, unprecedented. Luis Muñoz Marín was elected Senate President and during his first session made it clear that his party's campaign promises would be kept. The land reform law was passed, and with passage of that law, an extraordinary mission of redemption for the Puerto Rican worker began. Profits, once destined for the pockets of wealthy corporation owners not living in Puerto Rico, were now going into the pockets of the Puerto Rican worker. The accomplishments of the popular Democratic majority in the Senate continued with creation of the minimum wage law, 
an eight-hour workday, salary increases for school teachers, creation of the Electric Energy Authority, and university reform. In 1947, the United States Congress recognized the right of Puerto Ricans to elect their own governor. In the 1948 elections, the popular Democratic Party won another resounding victory. Luis Muñoz Marín, Puerto Rico's leader, became the country's first governor elected by the people of Puerto Rico. On February 27, 1950, Luis Muñoz Marín went to Washington to meet with President Truman and congressional leaders to discuss allowing Puerto Ricans to organize their own government under a constitution approved by the people. Antonio Fernos Incer, Puerto Rico's resident commissioner, presented a bill before Congress proposing that Puerto Rico be permitted to have its own constitution. It became known as Law 600. Once it was approved, a referendum was held in Puerto Rico so that people could also approve the measure. The people's support of the Popular Democratic Party was overwhelming. More than three quarters of the people voted in favor of Law 600. Of his trip to Washington, Muñoz Marín said, the authorization to create our own constitution will liberate Puerto Rican people, as well as people from other states in the Union, from the malicious accusations of colonialism that are constantly thrown at us by Latin American communist groups. The creation of Commonwealth or Estado Libre Asociado is approved by the Constitutional Assembly. The Estado Libre Asociado, the only form of freedom and progress, was officially inaugurated in Puerto Rico. Just days earlier in Barranquitas, Muñoz Marín had said, the Puerto Rican people have just created a new form of political freedom that does not threaten to infringe upon their other freedoms, what I call an integral liberty, liberty in every way for the people of Puerto Rico in free association with the freest country in the world. In the 1952 elections, the first to be held under the new Commonwealth government, an overwhelming majority decided that the Popular Democratic Party should continue its extraordinary work. With the establishment of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, it would become very well known throughout the world, not only in Latin America, but in the developing world as well. Technicians, educators, and planners came to the island to see firsthand the economic and political miracle the whole world was admiring. In little over 10 years, more than 20,000 people from 113 countries came to see what was happening in Puerto Rico. And what was happening in Puerto Rico? How could such a small island captivate the world's attention? What was happening in Puerto Rico was a revolution, a peaceful revolution, a bloodless, painless revolution, free of abuses or suppressed freedom. The legislature approved the tax exemption law and began Operation Bootstrap, Puerto Rico's industrial revolution. In the 1940s, there was a great imbalance between natural resources and the population, and converting a largely agricultural country into an industrial one was a great challenge met by Luis Muñoz Marín and Teodoro Moscoso through Operation Bootstrap. The success of the PDP's economic programs is evident today in modern Puerto Rico. Thanks to the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico's fiscal autonomy, the incentive program for capital investment creates a modern country. A per capita income, which amounted to $54 a year at the beginning of the program, is now almost $7,000. In fact, it's the highest in all of Latin America. President John F. Kennedy received a warm and emotional welcome from the people of Puerto Rico. The date was December 15, 1961, and President Kennedy was the U.S. President who had demonstrated the most concern for the problems of the people of Puerto Rico. President Kennedy asked for and received the cooperation of members of the Popular Democratic Party in his plans for helping Latin America. Teodoro Moscoso was named ambassador to Venezuela and later presided over the Alliance for Progress. Arturo Morales Carrion was named Assistant Secretary of State for Latin American Affairs. President Kennedy would later write a letter to Luis Muñoz Marín in which he said, 
I see no reason why the concept of commonwealth, if it is the wish of the people, cannot be completely developed as a permanent institution in its relationship with the United States of America. November 7, 1972. The Popular Democratic Party enjoys a resounding victory when Rafael Hernández Colón captures the governorship and renews the PDP's historic mission of progress and justice. Technical advances in first-class education are nothing new here. Puerto Rico is home to the world-famous radio telescope in Arecibo. And researchers here have done pioneering work in nuclear power, solar energy, medicine, and other fields. Puerto Rico has always been committed to education and science. Our managers, scientists, and engineers have been invited to do lectures in the United States and abroad. We are developing a tablet inspection system as advanced as anything that exists now in Japan. Our research and development group of young Puerto Ricans engineers have obtained more than 39 patents in the U.S., Canada and many other countries and 11 more patents are being introduced. During the past years, Industrias Vasallo has grown to become the leader and one of the world's biggest manufacturers of PVC pipes and fittings, producing pipes from half inch to 48 inch in diameter. In the PVC fittings business alone, we manufacture over 2,600 different products. Over $300 million have been spent by the airlines and the ports authority in our international airport, making it the most efficient in the Caribbean. Recently, an expansion of facilities was undertaken and more are in the planning process. American Airlines has designated San Juan as its Caribbean hub for both passengers and cargo. In addition, Puerto Rico is served by major international airlines serving every part of the world. More than 8,500 miles of roads and expressways crisscross Puerto Rico. No location is more than two and a half hours from a major airport or seaport. The port of San Juan is one of the 10 largest container movers in the world. Its 33 piers service 39 major ocean carriers. Puerto Rico's telecommunication system is one of the most advanced in the world and one that is fully digital. Puerto Rico has many things to offer, and certainly tax exemption under 936 is one of them. After all, companies are here to make money. Industries located in Puerto Rico are partially exempt from federal taxes, 90% exempt from local taxes. In addition, under Section 936, a portion of their profits can be repatriated to the U.S. parent corporation, fully exempt from federal taxes. We have seven factories on the island, which cover more than half a million square feet of Fomento building. We presently have hired and trained over 2,800 employees that we now have in our division. With the help of the Fomento Incentive Training Programs, the cost of training these employees has been extremely attractive. At any one moment, there is as much as $16 billion in 936 funds deposited in Puerto Rico's banks and financial institutions. This makes Puerto Rico the financial capital of the Caribbean. The importance of Section 936 should not be underestimated. It benefits not only Puerto Rico, but also the United States. Section 936 enhances the ability of U.S. corporations to compete with foreign corporations and to invest in research and development, expands the markets for U.S. imports to Puerto Rico, increases demand for U.S. maritime and port services, and provides financial assistance to Caribbean basin countries. January 2nd, 1985. Governor Rafael Hernandez Colon announces Puerto Rico's resolve to promote twin plants and the use of 936 investment funds for Caribbean development. We actually bring our raw material from Puerto Rico, we process and assemble some components and we send it back to Puerto Rico for packaging. In early 1985, we saw the advantage of the CBI program here in the Caribbean and opened up our plants both in Puerto Rico and here. We found that production here in Grenada is excellent. What material is brought here from our plant in Puerto Rico? 
and it's assembled and packaged sail ready here for shipment directly to the USA. The success of this twin plant project resulted from the transfer of technical expertise as well as meshing US Puerto Rico benefits with Jamaica's CBI benefits. On your twin plant concept has probably been one of the better ideas that have come out of Congress and out of the political arena because it puts you in a position to where you can take advantage of low-cost labor to meet what we're finding uh, is very competitive labor rates in the Far East and many other areas of the world. These workers are now assembling packaging components that have been brought from Puerto Rico and upon termination of this phase they will be shipped back to Puerto Rico to be finished. We will be embarking on having transfers of technical um, expertise from Puerto Rico to will assist the Beltranes Barbados staff in terms of improving their overall skills. Our relationship between the Puerto Rico employees training the Dominican workers has been excellent. The Puerto Rico uh, technical background has enabled us to train the Dominican workers on a high level of expectations. In the Dominican Republic, CBI and Puerto Rico's twin plant program have been especially successful. This is Thermal King, one of the four Westinghouse plants in the Dominican Republic. Westinghouse has four plants in Dominican and actually employ 495 employees. Our product is electrical harness that we made for our twin plant in Cialis, Puerto Rico. This control box was made in one of our twin plants in Dominican Republic. In addition, we have solenoids and some other harnesses fabricated there as well. The major asset which Puerto Rico has to offer the business community is its people. The work ethic, attitude, and loyalty which they bring to their job, whether on the manufacturing floor, in managerial offices, or in technical laboratories is excellent. USSC Puerto Rico Incorporated a subsidiary of the United States Surgical Corporation, commenced operations in Puerto Rico in 1980 with seven employees and a 22,000 square foot building. Today, we have over 1,400 employees working in a 200,000 square foot facility. So why is Section 936 so important for Puerto Rico? The total number of jobs created by 936 corporations in Puerto Rico is over 100,000. The multiplying effect of this type of positive economic activity has also generated an additional 200,000 jobs, making 936 corporations responsible for creating, directly and indirectly, over 300,000 jobs. 936 accounts for 25% of Puerto Rico's workforce, and 40% of all bank deposits can be attributed to Section 936. Section 936 has made it possible for Puerto Rico's economy to mature in partnership with major employers and to foster a global presence. A strong economy has made it possible for Puerto Rico's people to thrive in a fertile economic environment in spite of the fact that the per capita income in Puerto Rico is still the lowest in the United States. Section 936 is not corporate welfare. It's a matter of survival for Puerto Rico.